Thank you for joining us for this episode. If you have any questions about this week's episode, or maybe a suggestion for future episodes you'd like us to explore, please contact us through our website at eqfit.org. For more information and inspiration, connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube at EQFit. Continuing our focus on different competencies of emotional intelligence, the one today, and I know I say this a lot, is critical, it's crucial, but it really, of all of the different competencies in emotional intelligence, empathy is the one that'll get you the furthest, the fastest. And I want to talk about that today. Empathy, which is, again, another core component of emotional intelligence, it involves the ability to understand and share the feelings of another person. Now, the difference between sympathy and empathy is basically, sympathy is more like, oh gosh, I'm sorry you're going through that. Kind of surface level, right? Empathy goes a lot deeper. Tell me about that. How can I help? How can you share that experience with someone to better understand who they are, what they're going through, what their perspectives and perceptions are? That's empathy. It's foundational for building relationships, for managing conflict, and really for leading effectively. It's very difficult to be a good leader if you don't have a practice of empathy in your leadership. Now, again, I'm using the six seconds model of emotional intelligence, uh, which emphasizes actionable information, actionable competencies and skills. Um, We want to increase empathy, not just as a natural capacity, but as a deliberate practice, which can really profoundly affect both personal and professional interactions. I always like to start with a story or two, and, and I've started to call these tales from the trenches because they're true stories. Um, Several years ago, when I was working with someone who was struggling with their life choices, we had a very open conversation about all of the mistakes that this person had made. I could sense the self-judgment and the regret that this individual was experiencing. He had built patterns in his brain to reinforce negative self-talk. Self-talk's a big deal, and I know I've, I've gone over this before, but self-talk is a profoundly powerful force in your life, and we don't even think about it at times. Well, he was in a pattern of reinforcing negative self-talk. It created roadblocks to building trust, to good relationships, to self-worth, to belonging, to motivation, and really a host of other important parts of this person's life. That was when the topic of empathy came up in the conversation. The individual looked at me and said, you sure have a lot of empathy to listen to all of my mistakes and all of my messes. To which I replied, thank you, Yes, I try to practice empathy as much as I can. I wish you could do that for yourself. Silence. I could watch his brain process my last comment. I could see him going through that interpretation in his mind of what I was trying to tell him. It was one of those rare moments when something you say cuts through all of the noise and resonates deeply with another person. Then he asked the most interesting question. Do you think that the way I think about my choices and mistakes is keeping me from doing better? 
What I wanted to say was, what do you think? But that's such a flippant answer, right? But that is such a stereotypical kind of response. I mean, we blow things off. This was not a moment to blow things off or try to be funny. This was a very serious moment. And it was a very serious revelation for this individual. Instead, here's what I said to him. If you could turn the judgment you are living in into curiosity, what would that do for you? A long silence. Then, it can't be that easy, can it? No, it isn't easy, but it can be done. Here's another true story that shows how important this increasing empathy skill is in people's lives. I was sitting with the owner of a company who was struggling with a toxic culture that had developed in his company. He's a very driven and detail-oriented person. I could see the frustration and even anger in him as the conversation continued. Finally, he literally started turning red in the face and he looked at me and said, Why can't people just leave their emotions at the door? You need to fix these people. Oh, so many thoughts were going through my head at this point. Here's a few things just to share with you about that brief story. Emotions drive people. People drive performance. That's a a wonderful quote that I got from Six Seconds. Well, you cannot separate the emotions from the person, and frankly, you don't want to. Engagement in the workplace is the emotional commitment that people have to the effort, the team, and the organization. If you checked all emotions at the door, guess what? You don't get that response. You don't get people putting out more, people engaging at higher levels. Number two, fixing people is above my pay grade. That that one was an easy one to figure out. I'm watching this owner demanding people leave their emotions at the door when he was obviously not practicing that himself. I wondered if this was how he was showing up for his people. I predicted his empathy score would be very low, And that was verified when he took the assessment. The reality is, yes, we need to increase our empathy towards others. But we also need to do that for ourselves. How is empathy a part of emotional intelligence? Well, in the three-category model, it's a part of self-direction. So we can lead ourselves well. In The five-category model, it's basically empathy. Same thing, it's empathy. To build trust, to move forward. And it's not just build trust with others, it's trust yourself. Connect with others at a deeper and more meaningful way. Free yourself from thinking and feelings, especially self-talk, that keeps you stuck or that does more damage than good. Let's explore the skill of emotional intelligence more deeply. So first, let's just define what this increasing empathy skill is. So within the six seconds model, increasing empathy is defined as enhancing your ability to perceive, to understand, and to care about the emotions of other people. This competency goes beyond simply recognizing someone else's feelings. It involves engaging with them and responding to these emotions in a way that shows understanding and concern. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to agree with them that, that things this is right or this is wrong or whatever. This is about the emotional environment that they're experiencing in the moment and how can you better practice empathy and increase your empathy with them so you can understand their perception and 
their feelings and what their emotional environment is so that you can better relate to that and interact with them. It shows up as a deeper connection with people and it leads to more effective and and meaningful relationships and interactions. So what would that look like in daily life? Well, empathy can be observed in very different ways. In personal relationships, it appears as an understanding of someone's stress without them having to explain it in great detail. In the workplace, it could be seen as a manager noticing that an employee is struggling and offers support or adapts expectations accordingly. In a broader societal context, Empathy drives acts of kindness, compassion, support with people who may be experiencing hardship or struggles. Okay, that's a good place to really think about what empathy looks like in different situations. So what happens if there's a low amount of empathy? Somebody has a low score in this and and just doesn't practice it very much. When I say a low score, by the way, we measure EQ competencies or emotional intelligence competencies in capacity. How much capacity does someone have to use that that skill or that competency? Even if we measure high in our capacities, we don't always use 100% of our capacity. So there's a difference between capacity and application, what we actually put into practice. So if someone has a low empathy score, the reality is they have a low capacity to practice it. If somebody has a high empathy score, they have a much greater capacity to practice empathy but there may be times they choose not to do that. So I just want to make sure I got that measurement kind of right in your head so that we can understand what that looks like. So if somebody has low empathy or a low increase empathy score, here's what that might look like. A difficulty to understand why people feel the way they do. There may be frequent misunderstandings or conflicts with others because they just don't understand other people's feelings or their perceptions or their perspectives. It may be an inability to predict or understand how other people might react. I talk a lot with leaders especially about self-awareness, and, and there's, a, there's a misunderstanding of what self-awareness is. People think self-awareness is being aware of myself, And that's true. That is a part of self-awareness. But the other part of self-awareness is how are you showing up for other people? And if you don't have that other part of self-awareness, then you literally have half, only half, the self-awareness equation. If you don't understand how you're showing up for others, you may be saying things or doing things that are triggering emotions in other people, triggering reactions and behaviors that you don't want. And if you can't understand what's driving that in other people, then you're constantly going to be in this cycle of why did that happen and how how come that went that way? So this is important stuff for daily life. Here's another thing if you have a low increase empathy score that you may see in others, maybe even in yourself. Comments from other people that somebody is uncaring or they're detached. Those are different ways without an assessment that we can see low empathy scores in somebody. What are the consequences of those? Difficulty in forming or maintaining close relationships. Um, Others may feel misunderstood or undervalued. That's a big one in leadership. If for whatever reason, a leader 
is making their people feel undervalued, I absolutely guarantee you will not get the engagement level you want. And we know for sure by, by research study after study, an engaged employee will give you two to four times the productivity of a non-engaged employee. And undervaluing someone coming across that way with a lack of empathy, because that's where it comes from, then <laughs> you're shooting yourself in the foot as a leader. You know, in the workplace, a lack of empathy can contribute to poor morale, lower engagement, which we just talked about, higher turnover. Talk about cost. Turnover is one of the biggest costs in organizations. And also, just less effective teamwork, a less productive team. Then on a personal level, what's a consequence of low empathy? It can lead to isolation or conflict as people may struggle to understand the emotional cues and needs of other people. There's a lot of negative outcomes from staying in a place of low empathy. And the beauty of all of this, of all of the different assessments I use and all of the different things I measure from personality to mindsets to habits to uh, competencies to hard skills, soft skills, of all the different things that I use as far as psychometric tools, the easiest set of competencies to learn and to develop and grow in are emotional intelligence competencies and skills. This doesn't have to stay this way very long. This can change very rapidly, but there needs to be a commitment and an effort to do that. So where do we go from here? Let's talk about the benefits of developing more empathy or this increased empathy, competency, and skill set. If we can enhance that, Number one, you're going to get improved relationships. Higher empathy leads to stronger, more trusting relationships, both personally and professionally. And trust is that key word in there. It, it will lead to enhanced leadership. Leaders with high empathy are better able to motivate and inspire their teams as well as manage conflicts effectively you're going to get greater personal satisfaction. Why? Understanding others deeply can enrich your own life, your own emotional experiences, and can increase your personal fulfillment. So success and satisfaction should go together, whether it's in your life or at work or wherever you are. Those two things should be tied together. You shouldn't have one without the other. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. They, they feed each other. Here's another one. What's, if we can enhance this increased empathy skill, greater um, social harmony. Empathy contributes to more compassionate communities. So as people are more likely in that element to act in ways that benefit everybody. Think about this. Have you ever worked in a place or been a part of a group where it just felt like everybody was for themselves and and there wasn't really a team environment there? It just felt like, you know, it may be highly political in the office place or it could be something else. But if you've also worked in a place or been a part of a team where Everybody pulled together to help each other and to work together for the betterment of everybody. Those are two extremely different cultures to work in and live in. And I know the one I would choose, hands down. So how can we actually develop this? How do we grow this skill of increasing empathy? Well, first, active listening. And this is a big one. Because if all you do is start with this, which is focus 
fully on the speaker, what I like to call be fully present in the moment when someone is relating to you, when you're in an interaction. There is this horrible thing in our society today that I call continuous partial attention. Have you ever been in a meeting with somebody and you get into the meeting five minutes or so, all of a sudden they're on their phone, they're scrolling through, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're sending a text message or whatever. That's continuous partial attention. They're there, but they're not there. How can you send the right message to someone, especially as a leader, when you're not giving them the respect of listening to them. So people can observe nonverbal cues and emotions to better understand perspectives. But you know what? We cannot do that observation if we're not actively listening. We're not just listening to what they say. We're not letting them talk while we think of the next thing we want to say. That's not active listening. We are literally listening for the following things. What are they saying? What are they thinking? What are they feeling? What's going on there? If we can get to that point, we are way, way down the road in starting to build trust and build stronger relationships. Perspective taking. Actively try to put yourself in their shoes and understand their experiences and their viewpoints. This is not giving in. It's not compromising. It's not agreeing that they're right or even judging that they're wrong. This is trying to understand where they're coming from. And then practice curiosity, especially about what others are experiencing. Cultivate a genuine interest in the lives and feelings of others, asking open-ended questions to learn more about them. Be curious. I, I can tell you right now, decades ago, when I first started my sales career, before I got into consulting and coaching and all of that, I learned a very important lesson. Instead of dumping all of my information and everything on people, prospective buyers, and having all these wonderful sales skills and closing skills and this, that, and the other, I started practicing curiosity because what I learned is people will sell themselves because they tell you what their real needs are if you will practice curiosity. I've got an entire online course about smart selling, and it's practicing curiosity, it's embedded with emotional intelligence and a a process that I have dubbed hot cognition in sales. Sales are made through an emotional process. And people that understand that, I guarantee you, your top salespeople in any organization understand this, either subconsciously or consciously. They understand that every buying decision is 100% emotional. That's not my quote. That's Brian Tracy, who's probably one of the top sales trainers in the entire world. At this point, I think he's trained over a half a million salespeople. That's his quote. And if he's somebody that isn't an expert in emotional intelligence, but in all of his experience, he's saying every buying decision is 100% emotional, that should ring a bell for all of us. Curiosity is a wonderful way to practice empathy. And then just empathy training, like listening to this episode, uh, participate in workshops, do training programs that focus on developing empathetic skills. So let me kind of close out with this. To ensure that there's a sustained growth for you In empathy, you need to regularly reflect on interpersonal interactions and do that often. Think through what was said, what was done, what you were feeling, what you were thinking, and don't stop there because that's half the equation. 
What was the other person doing, saying, thinking, feeling? Seek feedback from trusted peers or mentors about how well you relate to others. Also, set specific goals related to understanding and responding to the emotions of others. That can really give you clarity and it gives you some benchmarks to work from. If you're really going to practice and grow this skill of empathy, it's just like any other skill. We need to have goals and mile markers to check to see if we're on the right track and moving in the right direction. Increasing empathy is vital to emotional intelligence that will really help you in so many areas, personal relationships, professional effectiveness, and honestly, just overall well-being. By actively developing this skill of increasing empathy, people can create deeper connections with others more quickly, by the way. There can be more harmonious teams and organizations. We can better navigate the complex social landscapes that we live in. And honestly, it comes down to, do you want more success and satisfaction in your life and in your work? This is a great skill to get there. Thank you for joining us for this episode. If you have any questions about this week's episode, or maybe a suggestion for future episodes you'd like us to explore, please contact us through our website at eqfit.org. For more information and inspiration, connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube at EQFit.